Hi, I'm Jim Gagno, and I'd like to take a few minutes to show you the new and improved Fossil Lab. The Fossil Lab opens up from a PDF document. And I'm going to go to full screen view. I'm using my Mac, but this will work just fine on a PC, a netbook, a Chromebook, an iPad, really any device that can view and navigate a hyperlinked PDF document. The Fossil Lab is menu driven and navigates like a web page. I can enter the Fossil Lab by clicking on the first tab. Here I see an index where I can access any of the 28 lab stations. The remaining tabs on top will take us to reference pages that students can access at any time. Let's take a look at what is a fossil. Students here can get background information on what fossils are and what fossils teach us. Let's go back to the lab and we'll take a look at station one. At station one we see a sample of petrified wood. We can click on the sample to enlarge it for detail and then we can go back to station one and look at the questions. But as I read this, I might not know what petrified wood is. So by checking out types of fossilization, I can read through and see permineralization or petrification. I even see the same specimen of petrified wood that was at station one. And here I can get some more background information which will help me answer the question. Let's return to station one. And after we're done answering these questions and placing the answers on our activity sheet, the Fossil Lab has a six page student answer sheet that also contains extra questions for some of the stations. I think I'll go on to station two next. Here at station two, we're talking about mold and cast fossils. Again, in types of fossilization, on page two, I can read about molds and casts, and I can see images of actual fossils. So at station two, I can continue answering questions and move on to the next station. Station three refers to index fossils. Here we have information on index fossils for students to look at for background information. We can click the image to enlarge it for detail. We may need some clues. And we can return to station three to continue answering the questions. At station four, we need to identify the fossil from its picture. We can enlarge for detail and study the image and see the distinctive ridges. Looking at clues, we can see at least three fossils that are very similar. On top here, the Canthoscaphites. We have one down here that looks similar, and one over here. But again, looking at the detail, I see ridges in our specimen, but I don't see ridges on this one. I see suture lines with a different pattern on this one. So I'm thinking Acanthoscaphites, an ammonite cephalopod from the Cretaceous period, is this sample five. I know its name. Now I need to find out when it lived. I can see that from one of two places. Here I can see Cretaceous. And I can also go look at the geologic time scale, and I can find the Cretaceous period. On to station five, where we continue to identify fossils based on their characteristics, determine their name, and determine their place in geologic time. At station six, we see three different species of brachiopods. Now this can be very challenging to distinguish these species 
even from the list of clues. But it's important for scientists to get it right. Even though it might look like this one, Neospirifer, or this one down here, or maybe even Eospirifer radiatus, as I study from an enlarged image, I soon realize that I actually have one of each. But it's important to distinguish, for example, Spirifer pelonasus is a Mississippian brachiopod, which is really important if you're in Kansas or Missouri and you're looking for oil, because oil would have formed in the same age rock as this fossil. Stations 1 through 24 are all contained within this PDF document, so no internet connection is required to view all of this information. But when we get to station 25 through 28, we're taken out to the web where we are going to need an internet connection. At station 25, we're looking at some animations on the way fossils form. Station 26 continues to teach us about how fossils formed. And at station 27, students can explore 21 topics using the latest science research and answer their questions on the student answer sheet. If I choose declining diversity, We're going to investigate dinosaur extinction. We can click on various layers and we get a graphic representation of the number of species found in rock of various ages based on actual research. And then we can go back to the fossil lab and explore these other topics. Finally, the last station, station 28, has some extra enrichment activities for students who are ahead of others. After students finish the lab, there's still the index fossil activity where students can assemble a four-page geologic timeline then they cut out index, foss index fossils and place them on that timeline. And then there are some very thought-provoking questions to put everything together. And of course, there are answer keys for everything. Thanks for your interest in the Fossil Lab. I hope you and your students find it both engaging and useful.